violation. So Gray did what there? He was walking in Memphis. Yeah. Two days away. Get two days away from uh, number two taking on number six, Villanova and West Virginia. And then after that, you've got Kansas against Texas. So two against six, one versus number 10 on Monday night. All right, I need further explanation on that walk. The in song, Memphis. Walking in Memphis. Who got my feet 10 feet off the beal? You know, uh, I'm, I'll, I'll explain it later. Okay. Yeah, please do, because that, that, that went over my head. Not, not saying that you weren't right in what you were saying. Probably should have. <laughs> They're probably better off now. <laughs> Back to the zone, go to Zags. I like this adjustment because Gonzaga hasn't been able to find any flow on the defensive end. Memphis has really just missed a lot of shots. They've had some great looks early on. Kemp had a go, only two on the shot clock, so the zone threw the Tigers off on that possession at least. Goodson scrambles, gets it to Gray. Long three, hit one from one side, he just hit one from the other way. And Gonzaga has taken the lead by one. So the Tigers out of the gate well, but the Zags back to lead 16-15 off the scramble play in the three by Gray. On the road with the lead by one, 16-15 over the Memphis Tigers. 542 mark here in the first half. About 18,000 inside the FedEx form where the Zags have played off in the last three years, not only against Memphis, and this is a home and home series, which they have just re-upped for another four years. But remember, Gonzaga played here against Carolina in the Sweet 16 as yeah. well. So they're very familiar with this arena. But I know Mack stretches out solid drive. And see Donnell Mack, uh, some of the other players here, Robert Sally, Willie Kemp are leftovers from the John Calipari era. And they know how to play hard. They're skilled athletes and they're veteran basketball players. And so they are providing some stability for Josh Pastor in this first season. But having to learn a new system as well. And that's taken a while. You got seven newcomers coming in next year, though. Blocked at the rim. Taken away from Gray. He got it back. Bolden set up for a three. He buys it right before the shot clock runs out. So this is a team in Gonzaga that's not going to flinch. They've had, they played too many good teams in the non-conference schedule. Michigan State, Oklahoma, Illinois, Wake Forest, Duke. I could go on and on. This is a team that plays one of the toughest schedules in the country. They're not going to be shook on the road. It's a weathered team. You're right. I mean, to have three or four losses to Michigan State, Wake Forest, and Duke. Mack misses. He's missed his last two. And then the uh, the loss to San Francisco, really the one, is Bolden had it tipped out by Coleman. It stays at this end. That's that's the one loss that uh, Mark Few would like to get back and say, look, we shouldn't have, shouldn't have dropped that one. Yeah, and when again, Gonzaga and Memphis, when those names on that jersey in Conference USA and the West Coast Conference, they're getting everybody's best shot. And in college basketball, you're going to have two or three games where your team doesn't play up to expectation, whether it be tired legs, it could be a number of different situations, or it could just be that they're 18 to 22 year old and you don't know what they're going to do. <laughs> well, every coach deals with that one. Cross court to Sally. Kemp splits the D with a spoon, passes it up, out to Williams. Elliott buries a three-pointer right behind the line. Memphis is a very sharp here in the first half, Terry. We've seen them pass the ball well. They've got very good floor spacing. Kemp collapses the defense, kicks it out to Witherspoon, and he has the presence of mind to know that one more pass equals an open shot for Elliott Williams. Kelly Olenek now on the floor, youngster for Gonzaga. Four lead changes the last four possessions, by the way. Fresh 35, Olenek has the size advantage, and Bull Kong found him underneath. I think Gonzaga's legs are starting to come back. They've gotten a couple loose balls here in the last two minutes, Terry, that has allowed them to score. That's an indication of being tired and getting your legs back. Williams had it taken away. Bolden may have gotten away with a push. Here comes Matt. The open floor stops, buries the three-pointer. In control, Matt Bolden. Quick timeout taken by Josh Pastner. So Bolden knocks down two in a row. 
Two pretty good perimeter guys in our star watch tonight. There's Willie Kemp collapsing in defense with a spoon, being a good teammate, sharing the rock. And Williams makes him pay. Now watch this, Terry. Bolden's going to go, okay, let me go behind my back, get away from the D. I'm going to bake some cookies, do some income taxes, and then put this dagger on the three off the break, showing you the control and pace of one of the best guards in the country, Matt Bolden. You know what, as a basketball player, that's about as fun as it gets. It is. what he just did. It is because you can't get him frazzled. You, you can't get him out of his own pace. He's so confident. The ball is an attachment of his hand. He can go anywhere on the floor that he yeah. wants to go. He's got eight points in this game already, eclipsing last year's performance against Memphis, where he only scored six. He's really struggled against Memphis the past three years, but they've had size and strength, guys who really were not going to get bumped out of the way when he turns the corner. This year, they don't really have that defending him. That's exactly right. Anderson, one of those guys. And from last year, 6'5", 220, about the size of Bolden, so really caused some problems. And Robert Sally with the basketball, one of the better perimeter defenders, but hasn't matched up with Bolden yet. Sally over the zone, over Bolden. Goodson high into the air for the rebound. The momentum has shifted here on the side of the Zags right now. Good defense by Kemp. Very impressive Memphis are individually defensively. They sit down. I mean, they bend their legs down low. It's tough to get oh, them off. What kind of pass from Bolden to Foster as he saved it from going out of bounds. And that's what you're talking about. Hey, listen, Terry, you and I have been saying this all season long. Matt Bolden doesn't get the credit that I think he deserves because he plays a style of ball that's so under control that people don't. He's not jumping up, dunking on people. He's not beating his chest. He's just killing you with precision. 7-0 run by Gonzaga. Sally was fouled on the drive with a 16 foul on Gonzaga. So we're right down the street from Beale Street, and Matt Bolden making a little music of his own over his head, away from the defense to give Gonzaga a six-point lead. Much of it due to the play of Matt Bolden. You never have an insecure moment when you're watching Matt Bolden play the game. No, he's always under control, and he's a coach's dream. You saw the team struggle. He comes out and hits a couple threes, and then he says they're going to back up from me, so I'm going to hit it again. He sets up Will Foster, primarily a defensive guy, when Will Foster can drop, step, and dunk. That means that Matt Bolden put that on a platter for him right there. From Highlands Ranch, Colorado, straight out of Thunder Ridge. Your favorite name, Thunder Ridge High School. I got to put a little, uh, put a little bass in my voice when I say it. Though. <laughs> Angel Garcia back on the floor, just threw it away. Goodson ran it down. Nice play to get there. Foster going to get it back to Bolden. Steps inside the arc. Not this time. Memphis basketball. By the way, Angel Garcia.